Welcome back to my Billet Intake Manifold Build Series. I'm teaching you how to build an intake manifold like this from start to finish, from design all the way to machining. If you're new here, definitely stop this video, go back to the beginning of the series and start there. I don't want you to miss any of the information I'm sharing there. If you're not new here and you've been following along, let's get back into Fusion and get going. I have an absolute buttload of time into this project, so please support the channel, hit that subscribe button. So in the last video, we designed the lower runners, these lower runners right here. Pretty sweet part. So in this video, we're going to cover designing the upper runners. So let's get into fusion here. All right, so this is what the two parts that we're designing look like. So let me activate these upper runners and I'm going to start this back at the beginning of the timeline. Okay, so basically in the design process here, I'm just starting off of what we already had, which was the lower runners. And I'm working within the space constraints of this mesh body again for the, up, the intake manifold that he already had, that he sent me the scan of. And so basically we're gonna start on that. So I started by basically just projecting a bunch of the curves from the lower runner part that we had already made and started sketching on uh, that to just basically get some information for the parts I was gonna use. And then I started making some random planes out here that basically uh, align with where I want these runners to end up. So I've got these planes here and then I created these sketches of where I wanted the runners to end up and what relative size I wanted the outside of them to be. And then I just extruded one of these original sketches here. I extruded that to start making my body. So just basically chose that projected curve that was the outside profile, that entire lower part that we had, and then just extruded that up. So that's the first extrusion that I did. Also note that I made this part is in its own component. So the timeline on this one should be a little more rational than it was on the lower runners. All right, so moving forward, I then added a fillet to the outside edge of this extrusion here. And the reason I did this is because when I was initially modeling this part, I found it really difficult to get Fusion to actually create the fillets that I needed. I ended up going back and forth trying to figure out how to make it work because the fillets kept failing. So the way I was able to make, to make it function was just to really pay attention to the order of operations and how I do things. The reason they would fail is because when I would make these two runners, they weren't quite touching in the middle here. So the, the fillet, if you tried to fillet both of these, it would fail between those runners. So my solution to that was every time I made a loft, I would then fillet that loft. So I'd fill it around that loft and then I would make the next one and fillet that one. So this loft profile is basically the same as we did on the lower runners. So it's got two profile curves one at the start, one at the end. So it would be that curve there and well, that curve there that you can't barely see, the yellow one in there. And then I used uh, the same type of guides to control the shape. So I used that same uh, direction. So it's basically trying to make it normal to the profile. And then you have that takeoff weight that you can play with to guide the shape to the shape that you want. So then I created the next loft, added this fillet, and you can see that by doing it this way, the fillets are able to compute accurately. And instead of failing between that part, since there's already that initial fillet there, it's able to figure out the geometry to create a nice smooth fillet between these, these runners. Previously, it was absolutely failing on that part. It just wouldn't do it at all. So next loft and then next fillet and then next loft, next fillet and so on. So now we have that base flange and we have all of our outside diameters of our runners lofted. Um, so we're, we're using a similar order of operations as we did on the lower runners. So doing all the outside work first and then we'll come back and cut the inside out later on. Let's see what we did next. Okay, this upper section needs to be able to bolt down to this lower section which, which has threads in the base here. It's an M6 thread. We're gonna have to have holes protruding through this upper part so that we can bolt this down. But the head of the bolt would not fit next to this runner. So I ended up making some standoffs that uh, would blend in with the part here. And that would give us the ability to have the head up above the runner a little bit where it would have room. And uh, all we'd have to do is use a longer bolt to bolt that down. And it wouldn't interfere with the inside of the runner at all. If I had the bolt head down here, 
uh, it would have cut into that runner and I also wouldn't have been able to get a tool in there to clearance for, for that bolt head. So I opted to just make these standoffs. And then I filleted them, made them all smooth. So now we have nice filleted standoffs for the bolt heads and a way to, that we're gonna be able to bolt that down once we cut holes through these, these standoffs and make a counter bore for the bolt heads. So it looks like then I started drawing the sketches to cut out the inside of this part. So just so I would have them for future reference here. And I drew the, uh, the arcs for the holes that need to go through uh, these standoffs. And then I cut those. So this is a extrude cut. So we cut those holes for those bolts to go through. So now we have a through bolt hole and then a thread in the bottom to bolt it to the lower runners. Okay, so then I started with this sketch here, again, drawing on this surface of this uh, runner here. And I drew this big oval so that I could make a flange so this can bolt to the plenum bases. Then I extruded that. And I actually extruded this back this direction so it's actually blending into the runners more. And you'll you notice the offset, how it's not on center of the runners. Uh, that's actually for a good reason. When I cut the inside of these runners out, and put the big radius inlet on this velocity stack here. It has a lot less curve on the top than it will on the bottom. Uh, maybe I'll just explain this later because it'll be more obvious. But there's a reason that that is offset and not on center of the runners. So then I did the same thing to the other side. And the reason I was extruding them back instead of out is I'm still trying to maintain the same uh, space constraints as this, this scan that the customer had sent me. So I didn't want to lose access to this throttle body having a nice straight flow direction in here. So I chose to extrude these back instead of out further. Okay, so then I began cutting these out so I'd have a nice uh, room for a nice velocity stack here. Did that to both sides. So that's just a real basic sketch. Just drew, th drew some circles on the, um, on the face of that part that aligned with my, my runners. So we cut those parts away and then I drew these arcs down here that'll be the one of the cut profiles for my loft cut to cut these runners out. And then I had previously drawn these ones. So I already have those sketches for that profile. And then I began loft cutting these out. So again, using the same end constraints, the direction end constraint with a takeoff weight that was the same as the outer runner. So it main, maintains the same shape, just a smaller diameter. And then we cut all of those runners out. And then we fill it the, the radius inlet of that runner. And you can see how it's got a lot more curve on this low side than it has to do on the top side. And that's why it made sense to offset this whole part here down away from center line of these because, because that this radius actually ends up just about perfect to that diameter that was here. So this is something I had to go back and forth with. I made the radius and then I was noticing that it was off center. So I went back in my timeline, offset this curve, well actually just offset these sketches. So I was just adding a, a value between where the actual center line was and the center line of this part would be. And I just went back and forth until I was, I was happy with the result. So now I'm beginning to create a bolt pattern on these flanges here so that I have something to bolt to the lower plenum bases later on. So again, forward thinking in the design, how I'm going to achieve what I want later on. So you have to really think forward on what your design is gonna look like when it's done and how to solve the problems that you haven't gotten to yet in the design process. Um, but you have to think about what you're gonna have to achieve later on so that you can design it into the part right now without having to go way back and modify a bunch of things and it, it gets a little cumbersome when you're when you're going back in the timeline and trying to change things that may or may not have features after them that that are related to them so it, it's better to really think about your design ahead of time and then try to design for future parts to interface with this so i cut this bolt pattern in here so now i have uh, four bolt holes here and then i'm going to start adding some more bolt holes out here that's what this sketch is for and i made some little Mickey Mouse ears on there. Um, and you notice again that I did not draw the fillets into this sketch. I could have very easily drawn the profile of this part here, so these lines, and then drawn the fillet and, and extruded this all at once. But again, Fusion does not like complex sketches. So it's easier to just draw these simple circles and then add the fillets after the fact, like that. 
So now I have a nice filleted radius on those little mouse ears. And I also filleted the inside corners of those runners. So then I'm gonna go do this same operation to the other side. So now we have the mouse ears on both sides with nice filleted radius corners. And then to save weight and mass on this manifold, I went back and drew some little parts to cut out. So I did these little drawings here and I cut away a bunch of this flange material on both sides. So now I have a really nice trick flange that isn't super bulky. This might be a good time to stop and talk about one of the de design constraints that I put on myself. Billet intake manifolds are a lot more dense than like a cast material. Cast aluminum is very porous, it's lighter weight, it has more surface area due to the, the porous nature of it, and it basically dissipates heat better than a billet aluminum does. And when something doesn't dissipate heat well, it also heat soaks and stays that way for quite a while. So one of my pet peeves when I see people designing billet intake manifolds is making them too chunky. So too bulky, too much mass in the material that they're leaving in their design. And that can lead to heat soak issues and basically the manifold just not being able to conduct heat very quickly. So one of my design constraints that I use is trying to make every part of the manifold as thin as possible. There's obviously constraints you have to use there because you have to have a thick enough material to handle pressures. And also during the machining process, you don't want super thin walls that will chatter and ring when you're machining them. So there's kind of a balance there, but my rule of thumb is to make it as light as possible while still being functional and still machinable. So moral of the story, don't make your manifolds too chonky. We don't want chonky boys. All right, back to this design. We're actually almost complete here. Looks like I'm just gonna add some fillets. So I've got some fillets there. And then I still need to do some counter bores for these holes. I'm pretty sure that that's coming here. Oh, before that, the customer requested having threaded holes for water meth injection, for port style water meth injection, which are just a eighth inch NPT hole, threaded hole. Like always, I wanted to make things nice and sano. I did this sketch here, and then I extruded this out with a draft angle. I just extruded it to this surface. When you're doing an extrusion, you can tell it to go to a surface or just to a distance, or there's a bunch of different constraints you can use. And when you have a sketch like this, that's just floating in midair, let me roll this back. So it's just floating in midair and it is only gonna intersect a solid surface like these runners here. Then you can just use extrude to surface and select this surface to extrude to. And that way you don't have to worry about it cutting into the inside of these runners. So I extruded those with a draft angle just so that they're easy to machine, easy to get fillets around. Added my fillets. So now I have a nice filleted little standoff there. And then I added all my threaded eighth inch NPT holes to them. So now I have those little port injector spots for the customer. And then I drew the circles I needed for the counter bores on these little standoffs for the bolt heads. And I extrude cutted those up. So now I have nice little spots for the bolt heads to sit and I don't have any risk of protruding into the inside of this port. So you can tell I have plenty of room there. So it's not gonna interfere with the inside of that port. So we're relatively close to being done with this design here. There is one little trick that I did here. I will put in a little clip right here of how I bolt these down for the second operation in the mill. But basically my idea when I started this was I'm gonna machine this side of these runners first. So this will be a big block of aluminum and I'm going to machine this side first while mounted on my fourth axis. And that way I can do all of these ports from both sides in one operation so that I have a good blend line in them. This is the same way I did the lower runners. I need to then bolt this flange down onto the trunnion table for a second operation. But these bolt head areas won't exist yet because that'll still be solid aluminum. I needed a way to bolt these down from the bottom side. So what I did was I just added, I just added an eight millimeter thread in the bottom side of this hole here. That gave me the ability to bolt this down through the bottom of the trunnion, be able to locate it accurately enough to machine the second operation on it. So again, forward thing thinking how you're gonna hold parts, how you're gonna machine parts. Uh, you have to think about that when you're designing or else you're going to design yourself right into a corner that you can't get out of. So that's about it on this design, guys. This is the upper runners. So now we've done the lower runners and the upper runners. So here's where we're at. And this is a pretty trick manifold by anybody's standards. And if we look at our section analysis here, we can see the shape of our runners. So there's the shape of our runner, our flow path basically. So 
nice radius inlet here and then we have a nice tapered runner all the way down to the, the head port and then we're actually curving this into the head so it's entering the head at the exact angle of the port on the head. This is all stuff you need to think about in your designs. I see a lot of people designing really square, really straight things because it's easy to extrude simple profiles and, and things like that. But this is a little bit more advanced type of modeling and you end up with a far, far better result. So now we're gonna have a manifold that's super trick and flows really, really well. So I guess that's about it for this one, guys. If you wanna see that overview of how I held these parts, uh, check this video here up in the corner. Again, if this content's helping you guys out at all, please subscribe to the channel. It's really gonna help me out. I do have a goal to hit 100,000 subs by the end of next year. That's my goal. I'm shooting for it. I'm making a real run at YouTube here. I do have a lot of knowledge to share. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.